Hey Hoties, welcome to my channel. My name is Hote Mass Tom and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today, we're gonna to be doing a first impressions of the Hip Dot and Evanescence collaboration. Before we get into some thoughts. If you're new to my channel, my channel is really about loving my makeup collection as it currently is and I like to really focus on the things that I already have. Every now and then there is a makeup release that really sparks my interest and I do purchase it but I try to be very discerning about what I do bring into my makeup collection. If that content sounds good to you I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video because that really helps me out and I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. There's no pressure to you but if you would like to it's there. I just want to say a thank you to all of my current patrons. You help the channel run and I appreciate you for that. So before we jump into this, I have to say a number of things. First and foremost, thank you to Hip Dot for sending me this palette because they did. And we'll get into that in a second. But if you are here because you are an Evanescence fan and you're like kind of dabble in makeup, everything I say in the studio that might be critical about this palette is to Hip Dot and not the band. And I just need you to be aware of that as we navigate this space. If you're gonna hang out with me today, I'm not making any commentary about whether or not Fallen was the right album to do this with, whether or not Fallen is their best album. That is not what I'm doing. And also I learned about some drama in response to this album, which I did not know when I had originally posted my other video. If you're new here, I did post a video talking about whenever this was sneak peeked. I didn't even know what the inside of the palette looked like at the time. I made a video in response to nostalgia makeup in general, but kind of using this palette specifically as a case study. But some Evanescence fans took that a little bit personally and it wasn't about Evanescence, it's just about nostalgia makeup. But the reason I talked about it is because this really hit me in the nostalgia heart. This album was very important to me when it came out. So that is why it got me. But Hip Dot happened to just see that video and they were like, can we send it to you? We would love to change your mind about us because I don't hold Hip Dot in very high regard as a makeup brand. And I was like, sure. So that's what we're doing. We're really gonna get, figure it out, <laughs> try it together. So let us just dive in. So I did not purchase this. So if you are a subscriber of mine and you know that I said I wasn't gonna buy this, I did not spend any money on this. Hip Dot was kind enough to send it to me. They were kind enough to send me this and they sent me a couple eyeliners. So they sent me, I don't know if they have a core line, but this might be part of their core line. So I have a brown one and a black one that they gave me to try. On the invoice sheet there, so they did said we'll send you something sparkly because I said I wasn't very confident in the shimmers that Hip Dot makes. And they said we'll send you something sparkly. So on here it says Hello Kitty Snow Cone. That did not come to me. And I'm not trying to be ungrateful. I don't need the Hello Kitty Snow Cone whatever that is. I'll, I'll pop a picture of whatever that is right here. I am not mad about not getting that. And I just, I need you to know that. I'm not trying to be ungrateful. So I'm wondering if that was gonna be the sparkly thing that they were saying that they were gonna send me. I probably will just use the, the black eyeliner today. Let us look at the palette. In my original video, I was like, I bet it's going to just be the colors of the album cover. And you know what it is? Okay, first and foremost, someone left a comment that they would hate the CD packaging. I'm not gonna lie to you, while this definitely looks in, like CD packaging, it is harder to open than CD packaging. Like whenever I first opened this, they definitely did something to make it appear as it's like a traditional CD case, but it doesn't feel that way. Here is the palette. No mirror, that doesn't really bother me. So it is a pressed pigment palette. So what that means is it's very likely, <laughs> it's very likely going to stain, <laughs> stain my eyes. And typically when I use blues, it stains my eyes pink. I don't know if that happens to anyone else, but like it's not gonna stain blue. It might stain blue, but like anytime I've had a blue that stains, it always leaves like pink. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, so it's a pressed pigment palette, which means that some of these formulas or maybe all of them are formulated in such a way that not all of the ingredients in them are approved by the FDA as eye safe. And it's up to you to make the decision whether or not that's something you're willing to do. I used to have the Urban Decay, oh God, what was it called? The colorful one. The Urban Decay Electric Palette. My goodness, while I'm Googling things, let me look up the snow cone. Oh, it was one of the, the things in the egg. That would have been fun to have. There is an embossing on the shade Everybody's Fool, which is this like dark blue here. The first thing I know, notice is a pressed glitter. That's not really my jam. However, I do think that this blue up here is pretty 
It's pretty. So I'm just going to take a moment to swatch the shimmers. Just get a an idea of what these formulas are like. So here are all of the shimmers. I definitely like this blue. It's It has some sparkle to it, some razzle-dazzle to it, if you will. This is also very pretty, but it, remi it reminds me of kind of like a lesser version of some like Cleona shades that I have. This blue is pretty. This I, I kind of can take or leave. It just, it's like kind of just like a, a highlighter shade. I'm just gonna go in blind to the mattes. My plan is to just, I think I wanna do, well, maybe I'll do something, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm going to do. So let's find that out together. Maybe I'll do something a little bit structured. I have no idea how these shadows are gonna work because I'm just like not familiar with Hip Dot's formula. So this is my first time trying them. And today's makeup, we're not gonna say it's inspired by Amy Lee's past looks. We're just, we're gonna take it for what it is. I'm just constructing a look. There's no reference. If you are new here, blue is not really my jam when it comes to colors. So I just primed my eyes with the Blink eyeshadow primer. Then I'm gonna set that really quickly with some setting powder. I don't know how this formula is gonna work, but this is just how I usually prep my eyes for eyeshadow, for powder eyeshadow. I will link a video to Jen Love's reviews. So I guess what happened with this palette is that Hip Dot teased it. And then I guess Evanescence, like the, the band, I don't know that Amy Lee said anything about it or anything like that. So act like fans of Evanescence who might want this as merch didn't get to hear about it, like they didn't know about it. And so that was kind of the drama that was happening, at least according to Jen Love's reviews. She said that they are going to do a restock of it and you can put your name on a list to be notified when that happens. I'm hoping that everyone who wants to get their hands on this can because this did sell out. I don't know when that restock will be. If you are interested in this, I will link that down below. Let's get into it. Why don't we? I'm going to go into Hello, which looks like a black, but maybe it's a navy, like a dark, dark blue. But it looks black. I mean, it would make sense for this, this palette to have a black in it. And I'm just going to rest my eyelids. It's going to be really hard for me not to sing Evanescence songs while I'm doing this. From Living, I have learned that this band protects their copyrights really strongly. I will not be doing any interpretations of their music either. We're just gonna let it live and laugh and love. There's sparkle on this brush and that's my bad. So if you do see sparkle in the black, but here's what I will say. It's a... <laughs> It is certainly not the worst black I've used. <laughs> it's pretty pigmented, but also really workable. I don't think it's the blackest of black that I've ever used. It's like pretty easy to work with. This is what we're going with so far. If I had to name my favorite song on this album, I don't know that I really could. I think over the years, Going Under was definitely the song that probably has gotten the literal most airplay because like it's definitely one that I still currently listen to. I mean, I listen to Bring Me to Life a lot, but like that feels like the obvious choice if I it was like, you know, I feel like even non Evanescence fans probably still every now and then get the hankering for some bring me to life, if you know what I mean. Maybe that's a wrong assumption, but it is how I'm feeling. The last time I probably listened to this album in full was in January of last year. I was supposed to go see Evanescence in Pittsburgh, but the original date that they were supposed to be in Pittsburgh, it snowed really, really bad. And so they canceled it. They didn't cancel, they postponed it to January. And that was like in December of 2021 was when I was supposed to see them, like the real date, and then got postponed to January. Then ended up just never happening because the second time it got canceled because either a lot of the team or some of the team got COVID or someone in the band got COVID. I don't really know. It was really like, they made that call really late. Like it was day of or like the night before when they canceled our show. So I didn't get to see them, which is a big bummer. And I, as I mentioned in my first video about this, now it's too bright. As I mentioned in my first video in regards to this palette, like nostalgia doesn't get me too much, but Evanescence definitely is like a different kind of thing. Like as a very emotional teenager, queer teenager, the moodiness of Evanescence's first album really struck a chord with me. And as I said, like there wasn't very like 
women, very many like women in the space of this. And a lot of my friends when I was in high school, well, middle school, they were listening to like new metal. And I know that like Evanescence is technically new metal, and I don't, I can't really get into the nuances of like the defining the Evanescence sound. And I'm not trying to say it's one thing or another before anyone. <laughs> But I finally could listen to the kind of music that my friends were listening to, but in a way that felt more akin to like what I was wanting to do. And I'm not saying that their sound wasn't like actually rock music, but young queer person at the time presenting as male, all of my favorite music up until that point had been the work of women in pop. And so hearing a woman in this space really really was like i was like Ugh, we i can it i can feel like i am engrossed in this kind of culture like i do belong here and it was just really really nice that's like why they were so important to me but back to what would my favorite song be like hello is really awesome going under just like kind of goes though like it goes off right like it just you know kind of goes okay now i'm going to go into the shade everybody's fool which is well it looks like a navy in the pan we'll see what it shows up like on the eye and blend it into here. Um, um, so far less impressed with this blue. And the reason for that is, it, I feel like it's a little bit patchy. I think blues are hard to formulate, like purples are hard to formulate, like that's kind of like a thing. It's not like, certainly not the worst. I'm just gonna change my approach. I typically more or less am mostly playing with luxury eyeshadow formulas that's kind of my preferred thing which is why i was kind of skeptical of hip dot being the one who was doing this collaboration with evanescence and not that i think evanescence would like i guess collaborate with like a brand like pat mcgrath or something that i would like typically talk about or like be inclined to buy that doesn't seem right either like i don't think that that's what they would do but so it's turning out to be one of those formulas. I don't do a lot of colorful makeup anymore. It's just, you know, it's not my preferred thing. But... My dog is acting up in this moment. I told you earlier that we're fighting. We are fighting. Here's why my dog and I are fighting. My aunt came over to drop something off really quick. And my aunt is, my dog is a jumping dog. The kind of dog that if you came into my house, she would jump on you. My aunt is a fragile being. She's just like older, not super well. I don't want my dog to jump on her and I don't want to be the reason that my aunt needs to go to the hospital. Like that is not my goal. She came over and I just stepped outside to grab it, like put on shoes and just went outside to grab it. And Riot got really, really mad at me for that. And so what Riot likes to do, because she knows it pisses the bejesus out of me, is just be awful and that's just what she's gonna she's just gonna be awful she is looking for a reason to bark which riot as you will probably don't know because you've never been over to my house before riot's not like a big barker she's not one to really make a lot of noise unless she really wants to be bad and she knows so right now she is she knows she's on my list for sure right now. As I was saying about the eyeshadow, the way I typically like to apply my eyeshadow, I like to do like really normally, like really diffused looks. And so I need an eyeshadow to not need to be packed on, not need. My preference is I don't like to pack and then blend. I just like to layer on gently layers and layers until it's at the pigmentation that I want. These eyeshadows are more like melt eyeshadows where it's like, it makes more sense to pack them and then blend them out. That is by nature really how most colorful eyeshadows work, like blues, things like this. Like this isn't uncommon for this type of like eyeshadow color. It's just like not my preference. And so it was much less patchy whenever I'm going in with like a much more dense brush and just kind of like pressing it in and just kind of tapping it out there. So far, so good. We're doing something, we're getting somewhere. And then I'm gonna take the shade Bring Me To Life, which is the lightest matte shade, which I'm not really sure what color <laughs> this is going to end up looking like on the skin. I'm gonna take it above this black line so we can get a little bit of it on there. It's showing up kind of teal, like it has a little bit of a green to it. So I just blended it a little bit more. I wasn't really going for something super harsh, so I'm just trying to soften that fake crease that I put on. I definitely needed to wash my brushes anyway, but <laughs> I'm glad I'm gonna be washing my brushes 
I'm going to be making an, a concerted effort to wash my brushes now that they are going to have all of this blue pigment in them. And I have noticed like they are, they're better, it's better to pack them with synthetic brushes and then buff them with a natural hairbrush. I imagine synthetic will work kind of however you want. Okay, so there we are so far. I'm going to try to use multiple shimmers. Stick with me here. I'm going to go into My Immortal, which is this satiny blue right here. And I'm going to kind of take it with like kind of like a, a packing brush. And I'm going to take it almost right on top of this navy shade on the outside to deepen it up. But I still want to have that shimmer. So it's not really going to show up the true, true color because I'm putting it over top of something a little bit darker. You know what's so funny is after I discovered Evanescence, and I really love the sound of Evanescence, I, and I did follow their career for a little bit. I mean, I can't say I followed it too much further, right? I definitely bought the second album, and I definitely have like, they did like a, a live album. I have that. Years later, they released a song, called an, an album, but like, a song called What You Want, and I, I definitely downloaded that song, and that song's a banger. And now I think they are doing much more, like, politically charged music, which is great, and I love that. I probably should listen to them a little bit more. You know, I, I kind of miss them in the rotation, I really do. Now I'm going to go into Taking Over, which is the duochrome shade, and I'm going to put that, like, right on the center of the lid. This is not super pigmented and maybe would be better as a topper, like a transformative topper. I'm gonna take a little bit of a fluffier brush and tap into that shade and just sweep it a little bit and blend it into that other blue shade. So we're looking, wow, okay. This is admittedly going a lot better <laughs> than I expected it. <laughs> and I'm just gonna be honest about it. And I, I'm upset about it, but I'm, Pleased. Okay, now I'm going to go into Haunted, which is the sparkliest blue shade. I'm gonna put that more towards the center of the face, closer to the nose. Yeah, that's definitely the most impressive shade. It's the most impactful. I'm basically just covering up that shade we just put down because this is just significantly better. So if you know of any bands that are like Evanescence, I did start listening to Halstrom. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. But they were the opening act for Evanescence on that tour that I was supposed to go see. And I, I like some of their songs, but I'm not really well versed in what they do. I will say, as I continued to grow and find music on my own that wasn't like radio play music, I got into Isley would have been like the my favorite band that came after Evanescence. It was like, I was really into Evanescence and then I got really into Isley and then I got into Lady Gaga, and then I got into Marina and the Diamonds, now just Marina. And I've stayed a pretty consistent Marina fan since I first encountered Marina. You know what's so annoying? <laughs> I know. I can feel it in my bones now that all the people who regularly watch my channel will be like, that looks so good on you, you should wear more blue. But I'm like already upset about it. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna take Going Under, which is like the highlighter shade. And I'm just going to put that on the inner corner. I'm going to use the glitter. I am. I've used every other, I've used, I've used every other shade in the palette and it feels like I should just go for it. So I'm going to take, it's a, it's called Imaginary and I'm not going to, wow. Okay. So that, okay, that picked up pretty well. And I'm just going to tap it on the outer outskirts here. Um, almost like just on top of the shade My Immortal. One of the reasons I don't really like playing with glitter too much is like, so you can't really blend it, right? Like it just kind of just lays where it's gonna lay. That adhesive worked really well and it picked up really easily on my fingers. I definitely feel like this glitter was designed to go over the My Immortal shade because they're kind of like similar hues of blue. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can take a closer look at the look that I constructed and see what the shadows look like up close and the glitters. Now I'm gonna play with this black eyeliner that they sent me. I'm gonna not open the brown one. I can just give that away to someone. It's supposed, wow, okay. So here's, here's the component. It's like, <laughs> it feels big. It feels big. Okay, here's a lip liner. 
just like a, it's so but it's big okay it is actually big i was like this feels really really large so it's double ended there is a liquid liner side and then there also is a crayon liner side which is not twisted up but it's there well let's swatch it this side is the liquid liner this side is the crayon So when I swiped on the liquid liner, it wasn't really that pigmented. It took a couple layers, but I, I'm, I, you know, I can, here's, here's what I'll do. I'll just line, <laughs> I'll line the lash line with the liquid liner, but I'm not going to put it in my wing or anything. I'm just going to take the black along my lash line, the liquid liner, and this is a felt tip. And with liquid liners, which I don't really use that often to be fully transparent, I prefer brush tips. I don't really care for this liquid liner. I would sooner go for my Surratt liquid liner over that one. But let's play with the crayon. I'm gonna just put this in the water. I'm gonna put this in the water line. That was not the best eyeliner experience I've ever had. It needs a little warmed up. And so when you're putting it in the water line, it doesn't really wanna glide on. So I would say that the eyeliner is a bit of a skip. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the rest of my makeup and I'm gonna come back and then I'll tell you what I'm thinking about these eyeshadows. I finished off the face. I'm trying a new foundation out, but everything else on my face is the usual. I'm just gonna zoom you in one more time so you can take another look with the rest of the makeup. Something I always like to preface with first impressions is that it is my first time using an item. Take this with a little bit of a grain of salt, right? Because I think what's more important with an eyeshadow palette is how much you're going to use it. Not only the performance of it, not only the first time you use it, but like after you continually use it, like how it feels, like do you want to continue using it? And that's not something I can tell you today. And I think that's more relevant information than what I'm about to tell you. But I can give you a little bit of a baseline. I know that a lot of people, and maybe you're watching this video and you might just be buying this for merch and you don't really care how good the eyeshadow is. But in case you were trying to discern whether or not to buy this or maybe one of their vinyls or maybe some other kind of merch from them as opposed to buying makeup, because that's something to keep in mind. But I know that there are absolutely people out there who are collecting Evanescence merchandise. They're gonna buy it either way. It doesn't really matter how good the makeup is. But in case you need to know, let's watch through it. First and foremost, the packaging is really cute. It is really cute. It's cute that it's in a CD case. Like it's very, very cute. And something that probably isn't going to pick up on camera super well, the paper has like a shift to it. It's like a little bit iridescent. So that's really cool. And I really, really like that. Let's talk about some of the eyeshadows. I will say this, the mattes were actually really nice. The black was really pretty <laughs> and it was really easy to work with, which blacks sometimes are not really super easy to work with, but it blended out very nicely. Of all blacks that I've used, whether they have been high end or low end, this was actually a black that I might reach for again in the future, just if I need a black. So that is saying something. This blue was a little bit patchy. And like I said, I really like to build up color and blend it out and not so much like pack and blend. It worked really well when I was packing and blending. It did not really want to play the way that I like to play with eyeshadows. So if you are like me and you typically like using eyeshadows, like potentially Viseart is the one that comes to mind the most. Or if you're familiar with how Viseart eyeshadows play, it's not like that at all. A another similar formula that I think is like similar to Viseart is like Lethal Cosmetics, where it's one of those things where it's like almost like watercolor, you build it up, build it up. It's not like that. This is something that you like want high impact immediately and then to blend it out. I like the shade. It like serves its purpose. It did its job. Not my favorite eyeshadow. This worked fine. This shade Bring Me to Life, the lightest matte shade over there. It was fine. It was like not my favorite color and it kind of was like more of a green blue as opposed to like the truer blue down here. I didn't really care that it was like kind of verging on a little bit of a, a green situation, but it worked. It's not, there's not a lot of it at play on my eye look today. It's serviceable. When it comes to the shimmers, I don't care about this shade. It's the shade going under, the highlighter shade, but it did its job. So like if you use like a white, like as an inner corner highlight, if you use 
it works for that. It's pretty, but it's not the most revolutionary version of that. And I feel like I have like a cream highlighter shade like a million times over in my collection. And I think I would have preferred if this highlighter was like maybe like a duochrome blue, something like the astral blue pigment from Pat McGrath, something like the uh, iridescent glitters from Cleona. I think that would have been a much more impactful kind of highlighting shade as opposed to just like a creamy highlight. It is pretty, but like you have it. This duochrome down here, the taking over shade, it's pretty not great. It's pretty not great. It definitely was more of a topper than it was just like a regular shade of eyeshadow. It wasn't fully pigmented, but I think even in a topper shade, it like wasn't really super transformative enough to do anything. I think that all of the other shades in here, the dark shades, it's not doing much to those it di and it didn't really do much to this blue either when I put it over top of it and I definitely know that many of my subscribers at least because a lot of the people that watch my channel are very into multi-chromes duo chromes and all that things this is like not it when it comes to that however I was pleasantly surprised by both my immortal and specifically haunted this is a beautiful blue eyeshadow <laughs> I love the sparkle to it like it's really pretty and I really liked working with it and it's the kind of eyeshadow formula that I'm pretty into. It's it's really nice. It's not like something I couldn't find elsewhere, but I'm happy to see an eyeshadow that has a lot of the qualities that I really like in an eyeshadow, especially when I'm talking about shimmer shades. Like it has chunky glitter particles, like in certain lights, it's gonna really catch the light and look really beautiful. I really wish that more of the formulas that were shimmery in here were this. Like instead of doing a pressed glitter, which we'll talk about in a second, I would have preferred a different shade of this formula because pressed glitters are just like not my jam. This blue is really, really pretty and I really liked the way it looked. It was pretty seamless. You know, satins really are much easier to blend and I always feel like those always pay off better no matter the price point of the formula. It's like they always are just like better performing shadows. But yeah, these two blues and they're both the bluer shade. Like they're both, they're very nice. I liked them. And finally, when it comes to the pressed glitter, I just like would rather not have it in an eyeshadow palette. However, I will say this, I haven't used very many pressed glitters, but I do have Slay Fire glitters and I've played with loose glitters before. This was really easy to use. So if you're not really familiar with glitter, the adhesive in it, I mean, I don't know how long it will hold up. Like I've not been wearing this makeup for very long, so I don't know if I'll get fallout from it throughout the day. You know, like I don't know what's gonna happen, but as of right now, I found it like very pleasant to apply. It picks up very beautifully on the finger. Not the worst thing, I just would prefer to not. I will tell you this, with some of the mattes, I did get some fallout onto my cheek whenever I was crafting my eye look. So I would suggest that if you were gonna buy this palette, to do your eyeshadow look first. I always do my eyeshadow look first because I tend to like sparkly things and I always typically get a lot of fallout whenever I'm using sparkly things. So that's just the nature of which I like do my eyes, like my face, so I always start with the eyes. So if you're not someone who starts with your eyes, I would recommend if you pick up this palette and you intend on using it for eyeshadow, that you do your eyes first. I did wear this eyeshadow for a bit of time. I highly recommend that you use something very tacky for the glitters. So like a glitter primer, like the one from NYX, the one from Too Faced, or any other primer that you would typically use for like a chunky glittery shade. I would use that for all the shimmers. The eyeshadow started breaking down pretty quickly on my eyes and I got a crease pretty quickly only on the shimmer shades, not so much on the matte shades. And that was kind of disappointing. The other thing is though, you should like, I actually kind of liked the way it looked. <laughs> But I have been very into like creasy eyeshadow, but I know that's not everyone's gig. And I just wanted to throw this in here as like a little bit of an addendum before the video wraps up. Here's my initial final thoughts, right? Like my first impressions, final thoughts. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> It's not my favorite eyeshadow formula. My thought is if you buy this and you wear makeup and you're also an Evanescence fan, so you are buying this with the intention of using it, not just keeping it in your collection, like keeping it in a collection of merchandise, you won't be disappointed. You're gonna get, it's fun to play with. It's, you know, you're gonna get a blue eyeshadow look, so you better be ready for that. It's better than I thought it was gonna be. There was really only two dud shades in here, like that were absolute duds. Everything else was completely serviceable and workable. It was fun. Like I had fun playing with it. Like I having having fun holding this in my hands. It's like everything about it just feels fun. So I, for $22, I think that if you are an Evanescence fan and you are interested in the restock, you will not be disappointed in this. If you're both a makeup lover and an Evanescence fan, 
I still will say this. I will still say this. If you are like me, who is like more so a makeup lover who is getting caught up in the nostalgia of that, I don't think you need it. Right, I just don't think you need it. It's not like the highest performing makeup. It's not the best makeup I've ever used. It's not the best makeup I've ever used at this price point. Don't get caught up in it and buy it just because it's like the stars have aligned where nostalgia gets you really good and it just happens to be a makeup item, which is like a thing that you're very interested in. I still don't think you need that. But I do think that if you are just searching for Evanescence merch and you happen to like makeup, I think it's better for that customer than it is for a makeup lover who also happens to like Evanescence. It's a, it's, I hope you know what I'm talking about. Like I'm talking to people who like love makeup and not just like wear makeup because I think there's a difference. Anyway, when it comes to the eyeliner, I would not recommend the eyeliner. I actually thought this was really bad. <laughs> the eyeliners were the girls I thought Hip Dot were. Pleasantly surprised by the eyeshadow formula. I have heard hit or miss things from the eyeshadow formula with other releases. So I don't know that you can take this release and my experience with it and apply it to other releases. My guess that the corn shot, the corn CD formula is probably very similar to this since they like kind of came out in tandem. I'm hoping that formula is the same because if it is, then I think that kind of the review would be exactly the same for that. But again, this is just what I'm using with the Evanescence palette. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And if you are new to my channel and you wanna stick around and love your makeup collection with me, love my makeup collection with me, and just hang out with me on a regular basis, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. That really helps me get out there into the algorithm. And I'm also on patreon.com again if you would like to support me there. And again, I really wanna thank Hip Dot for sending me this eyeshadow palette. Did you fully change my mind? No, but you really made my day. I'm like, I'm, I'm happy that I have this eyeshadow palette. I'm feeling very blessed. It was very generous of you to send it my way. It makes my heart fill with joy. So thank you, Pip Dot. I will see you all very soon. Remember to follow your hoat and you'll find me. I will see you real soon. Bye-bye.